Hi there, it's Jorik. Welcome back to my channel, Portugal and Beyond. Many of you that are returning realize that I like to talk about Portugal, specifically what it's like to live in Lisbon, as well as I sprinkle in a little bit of European travel news as I get it. Today's video are my top five tourist traps when coming to Lisbon, Portugal. I'm going to throw in a sixth, a bonus one at the end, but here are my top five. And I think that for those of you that may have come in the past, some of you may agree, some of you may not. If you feel like there are other types of tourist traps that you've experienced in Lisbon, please put them in the comments below because I'm very curious to see if other people have different experiences that might be able to add to the list of what goes on here in Lisbon. So first things first, restaurant appetizers. In all of the years coming here and now being here three years, most restaurants, whether it be local restaurants or even some higher end restaurants, even with different ethnic cuisines, will oftentimes bring you a covert, which is generally a little basket of bread with some butter or some spreads for it, maybe some cheese or cheeses and some olives. So little appetizers that you might be able to munch on as you're making a dinner selection. The thing is, those are not free. They're rarely free. In fact, I would say almost never. So what you'll need to do is if you go someplace, they will most automatically drop them off on your table. You're going to need to ask a couple of things. One, are they free? You may run into a place where they're free. Or if you're not interested in eating them, say now abrogado, which is no thank you, and then ask the server to take that away so you don't get charged for those coverts, those uh, different types of appetizer pieces. Now, pre-pandemic and even up until 2022, it could be two, three euros for that. So maybe you have a few slices of bread, you have some olives. It's not a big deal. Doesn't put a big uh, cramp into your uh, travel budget. But if you're here day to day and you're living here, it does add up over time. Here's the thing. Since 2022, I'll say since January of 2022, those covert prices have gone from two to three euros to let's say five to seven euros. So now it's going and now it's a glass of wine, it's a couple of beers, it's almost a, a lunch menu plate at many local restaurants. It's become expensive. So if you are not interested, you don't plan on eating any of that stuff, as soon as they bring it to the table, say no obrigado, ask them to remove it. Make sure as well it's not on your bill at the end of the meal. Oftentimes the covert shows up, whether they take it away or not, please check your bill to make sure it's not there. Sometimes if you forget to tell them, then you have to point or go to the table to show them that you didn't eat any of it so that they take it off your bill. It is something that it's common here. Many other countries, uh, you get more of that for free. So it may throw you off to deal with that, but it is something that don't want you to pay for something that you're not going to eat. If you're going to eat it, you'll pay for it. But if not, move on, ask them to remove it. Number two, it's an attraction. The Santa used to lift. It shows up as a top five attraction. It's it is a tourist attraction, it is a feature, but the reason I call it a trap or something that I don't think is worthwhile is oftentimes, especially in a high tourist season, you're gonna wait 45 minutes to an hour, sometimes up to an hour and a half to wait to get a 10 second ride on an elevator. Now I will say, getting a photo of it, it you can do a double take when you walk by and you're looking at what is that. Certainly it's worth taking a photo of, but to wait all that time, especially with travel, time is precious, to take a 10 second ride to go up to the top observation deck, I would walk around the corner. It'll take you five minutes, maybe seven minutes to walk around the corner, go around to the Convento de Carmo, which is where the top of the Santa used to lift kind of empties out. You can go up there for free and get the same view. Also, Quite honestly, it is a very nice view up there. I can't deny that. But there are numerous miradoros or overlooks throughout Lisbon that offer unobstructed views that cost nothing 
and frankly are better views in my opinion. So the scent he used to lift, it shows up everywhere as a top thing. You got to do it. I would say don't waste your time. It's um, again, it's it's not so much a trap. It's not a scam. It's I think just a waste of time to see it. There are other attractions that are much more uh, attractive and are worth waiting longer to get into. Number three, parking scam. This may not impact you if you don't have a rental car, you won't have to deal with this. But if you're getting a rental car to tool around Lisbon, or if you're in Porto or the Algarve and you're driving up or down to Lisbon for a couple of days, you may often run into this. You're looking for a parking spot in Lisbon, it is a premium to try to find any parking here. There's, it's just a tough, whether you're in a tourist area or residential area, it is not easy to find parking. So oftentimes you'll be in an area and you'll see someone almost flagging you down or pointing to a parking spot that's open. You can park there, no issues, but that person who is flagging you down or pointing to that area, there will be an expectation on that person's part that you're going to pay them you know, 20 cents, 50 cents, one euro as they helped you find that space. A couple of recommendations. When you're driving and you're looking for spots, don't make eye contact with them. Try not to engage with those people. There is no obligation that you have to pay them for that spot. Sometimes people are fearful that, well, if I don't pay them, then they're going to scratch my car or break into it or something. Crime like that isn't necessarily a big deal, I don't believe, here in Lisbon. and I just don't see the statistics that support that. So I don't think that they're really going to do anything bad to your car. But there, it's just a way for some people that if they're able to make a, a few dollars a day by doing that, they try to. It's uh, Also, it's if you want to pay them a little bit for that spot, super. But most likely, they're not really helping you get the spot. You would have found the spot either way. So that is kind of a parking tourist trap or a scam that... Uh, I would try to avoid. So if you have a car, just make a beeline for the open spot. Try not to look at or pay attention or engage with the person that's trying to show you how to back up or parallel park. Just move on, get out of your car, maybe smile to them, but just go to your destination and be done with it. The next one is something that is prevalent in Rocio Square going to the Praça do Comercio and the streets that uh, kind of connect those two areas. It's fake drugs, it's oregano, thyme, salt, um, baking powder, or whatever the heck they're selling. Oftentimes, they'll come up to you, and for me, although, again, I've been here three years, I usually wear a ball cap, t-shirt, shorts, tennis shoes, and a backpack. I scream tourist to anybody that looks at me. So oftentimes, I'm a target, and every time we go into those areas, even if it's just walking through the areas to get to another area, the Alfalma or the uh, the Shiadu, I'll get approached. Marijuana, hashish, uh, cocaine, and none of it's real. None of it's real. It's all fake. In fact, many times they're doing it right while police are next to them. So that's a tourist trap that they try to get uh, tourists to buy drugs that are not drugs. They're spices. And again, there's there's no recourse really because they're not selling you anything illicit. They're, you're paying a stupid amount of money for a bag of oregano. So there's nothing for the police to do there. Don't do it. You shouldn't be buying drugs in a foreign country. Anyway, what you do in your personal life is none of my business and in your home country. But if you're trying to do something in a foreign country, uh, you get whatever you deserve, I think, if you're trying to do something. Uh, but this, it's fake drugs. Just pay them no mind. Same thing. Now obrigado. Just like with the restaurant uh, covert, now obrigado, no thank you, and just move on. Try to not make eye contact. You may have a few people that follow you, but not for more than a few steps because it's the main entry point for people coming off of cruise ships. And it's also a main spot for almost all tourists to be in at some point. So they know if they don't get you, There'll be 5,000 more people that they'll ask today and somebody will buy the oregano or the thyme or the, the salt, whatever. So just be aware of that. It's a nuisance. It's not a big deal. Next one is money. Do not use an exchange kiosk or an exchange ATM 
or go into an exchange facility for exchanging money from whatever your denomination is into euros. I recommend you get money before you come to Portugal, get euros from your home bank. You can also use the, I will say, the exchange offices at airports, give a little better rate and a little less fees. Or thirdly, go to a bank in Portugal, go to any of the Millennium, Santander, um, Bank Inter, there's a number, there, there's dozens of banks here in Portugal. Go to an actual bank and ask for a currency exchange. You'll get a better rate on the euro to whatever you're converting from and you'll have less fees. If you go to an exchange kiosk or ATM or an exchange facility, the exchange rate that you're getting for euros is worse than everywhere else and they also charge a lot of fees and not fees that you know up front. Oftentimes you'll see fees that are being charged and deducted when you get home and you look at your bill and you're going, what are all these fees from? So in most countries I say, do not go near them. It's not just a Portugal thing. It's every country in Europe has this and it's something that I try to avoid at all costs. Uh, use your credit card when you can. And if you're able to use that in most places, you're gonna be able to use a credit card where you need to use cash and you don't have it, go to a bank and get money out of an ATM, okay? And then six, this is my bonus one. This is something that is coming up more frequently and it's not just a Portugal thing. It is travel anywhere thing, but it is kind of a tourist trap, but it's a self-made tourist trap. It's something that you have to pay attention to. And it's really, you have to double check and triple check your bill. When you're at a restaurant, hotel, rental car, buying souvenirs, anywhere that you go, my premise is we. I can tell you that two years of travel throughout the pandemic and traveling now as we're easing out in a more open world in 2022, more places here in Portugal, we're finding that the bill's wrong, especially at the restaurant. We are getting charged for the covert and we had it removed. We're getting charged for an extra drink that we didn't ask for, or an extra appetizer, or an extra meal. It's happening more often and more prevalently. When we travel around Europe, we're finding this too. And not just at restaurants, but hotel fees that shouldn't be there, rental car fees that we didn't uh, ask for, or shouldn't be legally charged. And the reason I'm saying this is that because the hospitality, the hotel and hospitality industry, the airline industry and train uh, companies, as you're seeing from my videos and the strikes and delays and frustration, there are just less people handling things. So when a server was handling 10 tables, they're now being asked to, to handle 20 tables. When there used to be bar two bartenders at the restaurant, now there's just one. So where I'm going with that is it's not malicious, it's not a trap, and it's not a scam, but it is something that you need to be aware of that because of the lack of human resources, the lack of people that are in these capacities, you have to be very, very cautious and more cautious than ever of your bill because it's just they can't keep track of everything. It's not something... Uh, evil or not something wrong that they're doing. I don't think that there's malicious intent in, uh, in these bills. I think it's, they have way too many orders to take care of. They have way too many customers, regardless of industry that they're trying to handle. And they just don't have enough bodies servicing all of the people. So they're gonna make mistakes. So it's a good thing anyway, to double check your bills anywhere you go for any reason, but now, flying, driving, train, hotel stay, restaurant, anywhere you go now, regardless of country, please double check that bill, even triple check it. Have somebody else at the table if you're there with a party go through it just to make sure that everything is on the up and up and you're not getting charged more than what you should. So those are my tips, five plus one bonus. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you enjoy my content. And as always, enjoy your travels.